Hello and welcome to your next tutorial on Visual Basic and today we're going to uh, start up wh where we left off. Now if you uh, weren't there for the last video, don't worry, you, you don't need to know any of this code, I'm going to delete it all. Uh, but hopefully you're watching these two at the same time really. So we're not simultaneously, but you know what I mean. Okay, so we're going to learn about structures. So what are structures and how can they be helpful? Well, we've learned about organizing data in different ways. You could use uh, arrays for an example. You could, uh, which is really helpful for if you want to associate a whole bunch of different inf information with the same variable. It's really helpful to put all that information in an array. Uh, but what about structures? How are they different? Well, the difference between arrays and structures, specifically, is that with structures, you can use different data types. When you create an array, it has to be the same data type. But with uh, structures, not so much. So you know what? I'm going to get rid of all this now. And I think I'm going to show you what I want to do with this example. So let's see here. Save. And OK, so in this, uh, I don't think I need this anymore. OK, so we have two text boxes here, TXT name and TXT GPA. And what if we want to store both that information somewhere? Well, we couldn't use an array because this is going to be a string, and this this is going to be a double. Ooh. So uh, we're going to have to create what's called a structure. And this is really, really nice for organizing this information and storing it. Uh, if you were going to, well, we're not going to be storing it in this example. But uh, this is kind of like a really good uh, introductory video if eventually you're going to become really awesome with data structures using Java or C++. But this is like a much more basic example if you're using it in like a .NET language, for an example. But let's create our structure. So I'll call it private structure. But there we go. And what do we want to call it? We'll call it applicant. Since we're going to be looking at applicants for people that are applying to a university, let's say. And we're only going to have two variables, name and GPA. So let's call it, I don't know, public. And let's call it name. Is that what it was? I don't even remember what I was doing. As string and public GPA as round well, double. Because they're going to be in decimal form anyways, so I guess that's all right. That's a really, really nice little structure we got there. Um, when you're creating structures, you'll most likely have more things. If it's an applicant for like a job, you'll probably have the phone number, email, a whole bunch of other stuff you can put in, on their address. Uh, structures are really, really nice. Uh, so let's create a, well, a button to submit the information. So, btn submit. And down here, submit. I'm glad I made this a separate video from before. I'd almost be at the 15 minute mark by now. Double click this. Alright, so we have a little submit button. So in here, we're going to have to create our variable that will basically reference this uh, structure that we created. So I'll call it, I don't know, dim, what do you want to call it? Applicant? No, that's the name of our structure. We don't want to do that. Let's call it a student as then the name of our structure. So is it there? Oh, it's actually right here. You can see it. Applicant. There it is. That's pretty cool. So, unused, yeah, unused, that's the error. And, well, let's use it, actually. So, uh, we have to create an if statement, if, and then when they submit it, we want to use the information that they created. So, text.name.text .text equals nothing. Let's create nothing, so we'll create a, so if it's not equal to nothing, actually. We don't want it. We want it to be if it's not equal to nothing. So basically, there's something in there. Then, then we have to create a nested if statement right here. Let's call it text GPA dot text is not equal to nothing. Then, and then a nested if statement. Then down here we'll have an else. So basically here we'll have a message box dot show 
uh, invalid input error oh I, oh my goodness I'm so sad with myself right now I'm really messing up input whoops error there we go message box buttons okay and error because it's going to be an error so I'll have this I'm going to want to copy this copy and this else is associated with this if so we're going to want an else associated with this oh whoops not after the end if we want to have an else up here so control V so if both of the so if the first one doesn't work if there is nothing in there then we'll have invalid input, else invalid input, and you should actually have a try catch outside of all this in case the stuff doesn't work out well, but I've already passed up my opportunity to do that correctly. Okay, so if this is right and if this is right, so basically if they have both pieces of information correctly, we're going to be in here now if they have both correct. So we'll have, uh, let's see here, name, applicant, oops, student dot and then either name or applicant whatever it is name will be equal to and then whatever we typed in so text name dot text there we go and student whoops I'm sorry about that student dot GPA I'm actually wondering if I'm gonna have to do some sort of conversion here. I shouldn't have to. Dot text because this is text. Ah uh, no. Okay, I think I can do this. Uh, C double. Hopefully this will work. I don't. It might not. Oh sweet, it did. I was afraid option struct was gonna be like no. I don't like this. I'm not gonna do it. And let's create a message box that pops up. Option strict scares me sometimes. So we'll throw in a. Uh, your name is space plus student whoop, dot name plus and your GPA is plus. Uh, well, let's go student dot GPA. Uh, let's throw in an enter. What should we have it? Output or output and received. Okay. Information. That should pretty much work out. String. Oh, whoops. Dot to string. There we go. I knew I was going to forget something somewhere. And let's see here. It's a double, so from string to double the name. Option strict disallows implicit conversions from string to double. Where oh, goodness. Um, well, I'm going to be right back bef so I can figure out this uh, error. All right, I'm back. My goodness. I thought this was... I, I was mis messed up. This isn't what I needed converted to a string. Because that's not the double. The name's a string already. The GPA is the double. So, to string. That was the problem. I Sorry, I was, I was confused. I was thinking this was the double right here. Okay, so now everything's a two string. Let's just make this a two string just because... At this point, does it matter? Ah. Okay, so I have to click save, and I build this guy. So let's throw in our names. Adam. Let's say my, let's say my name is Adam. You know, no, no, I'll go. Let's go with John Doe. Let's let's be really original here. What is GPA? Uh, I don't know. Zero point seven nine, something like that, right? Click submit. Your name is John Doe, and your GPA is 0 0.79. It's not too bad, John Doe. It's not too bad. Um, 
Let's go, uh, Stuart Wallace. Let's say his GPA is like a, I don't know, a 2.99. Oh, there it is. Your name is Stuart Wallace. Your GPA is 2.99. Wow, Stuart is really showing off his fancy GPA there. Wow. Um, that's really overboard there, Stuart, don't you think? Okay, that, that would, that's about it for this tutorial. Uh, so I should probably explain this once again. So we created our structure here. We called it applicant. I wonder what happens if I do this. Oh, it moves the information. Okay, control Z. Because that usually happens sometimes. I don't know what's going on. So we created a little structure right here. Uh, we called it applicant. We can create our own data or our own variables inside here as whatever data types we want. That's what's so different between structures and arrays. Uh, then we created a variable down here called student, and it's using our structure that we created. So then we created a bunch of text boxes here, uh, assuming that both text boxes have something in there, so it's not equal to nothing. Then, and if either one is false, so if if this one is false, we go to this else. If this one's false, we go down to this else instead of that else. And it's the same thing, same errors. And I would put a try catch around this whole thing. I use them in most of my tutorials, so you guys probably know about them. Uh, just in case you threw in a string or something for the GPA. But that's alright. But anyway, so if both are true, then we go student, so that's this guy right here, dot, so now we're going to be accessing the variables inside this structure. Name equals then the information that we put in our text box. So text name dot text. This is already a string, so it's alright and this one's a string as well, the GPA so we need to convert it to a double which we did using CDBL uh, implicit conversion so then then we just printed it, then we created a message box to print them student.name.toString and if you're and just so you can avoid the trap I went into if you're going with double, see how it says public GPA has double make sure you go to a string, I can't believe well I, I was thinking this one was the double, I don't know but yeah that's that's it for this tutorial. I hope this was helpful for you and uh, opened your eyes to how helpful structures can be. And I'll see you next time.